Well, hi everybody, and welcome back to my video channel. Um, it's been about a few months now since I talked about this uh, Ico Model 950, and I haven't really had a lot of time to get back to it. I'm going to try to pick up where I left off. I wanted to show you some of the original service paperwork that came with this particular instrument. I have the service policy here. It tells you all about... I'll try to scan down that. I guess you might be able to put pause on and uh, read it yourself later if you want to if you're so inclined I hope that's in focus but I can't be sure that's the warranty and then interestingly enough at the bottom here they have all of the service charges for everything that I assume might go wrong and I guess these are the parts and the cost of the parts if, if you need them. So everything was very upfront in those days. It's the authorised warranty service agencies or the, the dealers that will or the people that will repair this for you. It's pretty much all the states are represented. Uh, there's Hawaii there. Quite a lot in New York and then over here there's Canada and New Zealand. Um, but of course, I suspect none of these places are around today. The instruction manual, this is the, uh, the original instruction manual. I don't think there are too many of these around. You see the, uh, the image there of the ICO tester. Anyway, everything that's in this manual is available as a download on the internet. Um, which is what I had, I actually bought that and had a look at it. I say I bought it, I downloaded it, had a look at it before I bought the instrument and then sitting in the box was um, all, the, all the original information. Um, that's the schematic for it. But I, I quite like the way that opens there with the, with the hole in the front cover so you can see that. I'm going to pick up where I left off. I'm going to try to restore this. I did get a number of components from uh, Just Radios. I think in my last video I said they were an American company. Well, that was actually a mistake. They're, they're a Canadian company. And everything you see here on this uh, amp cradle here, all these parts are all parts, um, not the wire, that I got from them to do this restoration. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. I'm going to work through the schematic and construction manual which I also found online which in fact is the best way to do this because it takes you through every step of the construction, how to put it together if you bought this as a kit. Um, and the beauty of that is that every single electronic component is listed, it's numbered, it, you see in the diagrams where it goes and you see what the values are so by working through that construction manual you can see where everything's supposed to go um, and in this case I'm just going to be replacing the capacitors there are some precision caps and a few bits and bobs uh, they came in this bag here it says on there one percent all the parts in there have all been um, measured by Just Radio and sent out to me in the UK having everything measured so I know that those will be good for the job. Before I do any repairs I just want to show you this schematic. If you look down here on the left it says C1, C2, C3, C4 these are all the capacitors where it says P those are the potentiometers and in the second column where it says RES or RES that's resistors and then Next to that, going back again to the capacitors, it tells you what they are, what their values are, so you can see what's needed or what components uh, are used in the, in the equipment. And then if you take a look at C2, for example, the second one down, it says PRES, which stands for precision. So you know which ones are precision resistors, and so when you replace those, you need to make sure that you've got the right tolerance. And if you look over here where it says resistors, I'll zoom in there, it's probably slightly out of focus. Uh, for example, the third one down says 250k half watt 1%. So that's a 
resistor with a 1% tolerance so you need to make sure you get those right so when you're buying the parts this list actually makes that quite easy because you can see exactly what is what and as I said earlier I already did this uh, I kind of went through and measured everything to see what was within tolerance and what wasn't and based my list on that so going from here to the construction manual you'll see where each one of these pieces are and where, how they're connected because C1 will be labelled as C1 in the manual so when you see the image of it you'll see where it's assembled, where it goes and then you know the value from this this chart here so it is I think fairly, fairly straightforward to replace the capacitors and check the tolerances of the components and buy replacements through Just Radio if you need to which is exactly what I've done. Following on this theme of how to identify the components when you're doing the repairs this construction manual which I also downloaded is very useful as I said earlier and I'll show you how um, again there's all the, the parts list and then you start to see how this thing is constructed or assembled and for example there it says P1 which is the potentiometer 1 and you can look that up in the chart I showed you earlier and see exactly what it is here for example you see the back of the magic eye tube and you see uh, two resistors there and they're R3 and R10 in fact the values are already listed on this page which is also useful but you can look at the uh, parts list, check what R3R10 R10 is, know what the values are, and then test your components. And in my particular case, both those components have drifted quite a lot, so there you see the replacements. These are actually 1 watt resistors, but that doesn't matter. Uh, you see them on the back of the tube there. And so that's sort of what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you here. There's a wax and paper capacitor that's going to have to be replaced this uh, spray one here has to go um, and then there's another wax and paper one there that may be a precision one I'm not sure I have to check and you see underneath here I, as in the last video I'd already replaced a few of those those were wax and paper there's another big one there this uh, electrolytic now this is a 525 volt one um, which I believe, I have to sh verify this, but I'm replacing that with this one. Um, I don't think I can get a good focus on that, but that is a 630 volt uh, capacitor, which the only place I can get those is uh, just radios. So, so there's that one's going. Uh, I've replaced one at the back there. These on the top are all the precision resistors, and they are fine. There's a couple at the back there. I have to verify that they're okay and there's another carbon one there oh and here's an electrolytic by the looks of it that's another one that's got to go and the weird thing is of course when this is all repaired I can then test these parts and see if they were bad to begin with some of them may be okay I don't know but I can't I don't know for sure until I can test them and I can't test them until this has been uh, restored okay uh, looking at the back of the ICO 950B and not in any particular order but I'm going to remove this wax and paper capacitor this large one there so when I look at the diagram I mean you can follow the schematic obviously um, there's no problem with that or do both in fact but what this diagram shows me is that that capacitor I'm talking about is that one there it says 2 microfarad which is what it says on the capacitor um, I'm just verifying that it is the one, it's in the, the right place on the, on the body, so I know, I'm absolutely certain which one I'm taking out. It says C4. When I look at the C4 chart, capacitor 4 is a 2 microfarad cap. It also says it's a precision cap, so that's something uh, obviously very important and that I took into account when I ordered these capacitors. a bit fiddly. Oops.
we go. I think while I'm at it, I'll just carefully remove this uh, valve here. This is the rectifier valve. Okay, that's loose. So this one's out. It's a big old two microfarad plus or minus five percent it says 150 volts DC. That is interesting. Uh, this must have been hand selected because on the schematic it lists that as a precision cap QMF. What it says there, it's basically 2UF. And that one is C4, and that is listed as a 2 microfarad precision cap. So this is obviously, was originally selected. Um, and the one that I'm, it's very heavy actually. I've never had one of these in my hands before. Very heavy. I should test it later and see if it's okay. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to put that aside. And the replacement one is this big one in here. Which is listed as a 205K. Now, that's the first time I've come across this 205K designation. Um, as I said, I'm fairly new at this. I'm going to put this on the meter. Set it to capacitance. This is not an, this is not an electrolytic cap, so uh, it's reading 2.011 UF. So that's actually within one percent. Just slightly over, but it's it's so small. I'm sure it'll be okay. This one, just out of curiosity. Okay. Well, this one is a bit off. And it's not no longer a precision cap. Um, it's clearly reading 2.842. It's almost 3 UF. So, and if the leads are long enough, I think they will just about be long enough. This is going back in its place. I'm going to do that next because I can get to it. I suppose I could remove that one first, but I'll go for that, see how far I can get with it. The passage is 3 on the chart, and that's another 0 0.2 MF precision capacitor 3. So I'm going to take that one out. There's quite a, quite a lot of wires here, I've got to be careful I don't do any unnecessary damage or melt anything I don't need to. as I quite like the solder sucker. I do quite like the wire braided uh, approach as well. This one I often find out my finger gets in the way of the plunger so I don't get rid of it. All the solder it sort of loses suction. Sometimes I do a combination of both. Whatever it needs to get it done. Now I've got the solder off, I can see that this has been wrapped around the terminal quite tightly. Um, that's not going to come off. So I'm going to just cut it free. Take a closer look, I don't want to snip the terminal. Now, to be honest, uh, the light coming through the window is hitting this at the back and making this a bit difficult to see, so kind of a torch or flashlight as you say in the States often helps 
Okay, wondering if I might be able to push the remaining wire off the terminal. I think that did it, still on the end of the soldering iron. Let's wipe that off. So another look. Yeah, we've got a clean hole there. That's good. And the other end is hmm. That's more complicated because it's connected to a point. Which is part of the rotary switch. I'm going to be particularly careful about that. I'm going to have to go slowly with that because I don't want to damage any, that domino capacitor there. I don't think there's anything wrong with that and I don't want to sort of overheat it or do any damage to it. I'm going to have to go quite carefully. As you can see I got that piece out, that little uh, capacitor. That wasn't easy, that took me probably about 10-12 minutes. There were three, a wire and two capacitors into a very small eyelet there. Uh, right at the back there, a lot of solder and unfortunately that same eyelet is part of the switch so I had to be very careful not to overheat or damage the switch mechanism. Those components are attached to a, a sort of lug that this rotary switch engages with so I think it's alright, it still looks fine. But that wasn't particularly easy, there wasn't a lot of space and in the end I had to move the Sprague, I think they call them Black Beauties, this thing here, had to come out. 0.02 UF and it's showing at 30 nanofarad so that's 0 0.03 UF isn't it so um, that's out it's certainly uh, supposed to be a 1% capacitor it's certainly not that anymore so this is the trouble I think with these paper and wax capacitors this unit I wouldn't have been surprised if, if I'd been able to find out that hardly anybody had used it I mean, it was almost mint when I got it. It had all the original paperwork. Uh, it didn't look like anybody had been inside it. There was no scratches or anything on the cover plate that would indicate somebody had tried to take it apart. Um, and it looked pristine inside, but pristine or not, these things don't last. Whether they've been used or not, they, they don't hold their values. So that kind of proves it, and I'm glad that I'm doing this uh, restoration. The other thing I should probably mention is that whenever I do any kind of restoration project, every bit that comes out goes into a bag which I label. This is, says ICO 950B. So every component is thrown in the bag. I keep them all together. I keep it with a unit. So should I ever sell it um, or need to make any references to, the, to what was changed or show people what was changed or even for my own interest later on, um, I, I have it. Well, I've got that part back in. I don't think it's in focus, but you can see the yellow part there. That uh, seems to go, it seemed to go in alright, a little bit tricky, but because there's not a lot of space there, but the, um, the switch still operates fine. Now, this spray part here, this big one here, uh, hmm, well, I know it's still got one lead attached, but I hook it up and check it on the meter. It's supposed to be 0.25 um, UF, so you move the decimal point three places, it's 0.246, which is 0.25, close enough. The problem is, though, it's rated at 600 volts, and I don't know whether at 600 volts, whether it will still do what it's supposed to do. This piece of uh, equipment is to test all these capacitors and resistors and make sure that they perform under the correct voltage so that they don't leak. It's a, it, it's a, it's a funny area. Should I leave it in because it, it seems, seems to work or should I take it out, put the new one in which measures uh, correctly, spot on actually. Um, and then test this one and, and see what the findings are. It's really hard to know, isn't it? But I think I will take it out. Uh, there's always a possibility if it works fine, you could always put it back. It's, again, it's hard to know. I mean, the general sort of wisdom is that you should take them out after all this time, but a lot of people like these, and I must say they do look lovely. <laughs> Took this one out, got the new one soldered in there. 
that's uh, the voltage rotary switch, this one here, that's to change the voltage, and uh, this one here for uh, check the resistance and the capacitance. Anyway, um, I'm going to solder this in. I, I, first of all, I put a little bit of solder on the iron itself to transfer heat onto the surrounding area. Let's move those wires so I don't ruin those. And then heat up the, in this case, this tag here and the wire itself. And I'm applying the solder on the far side of the wire so I know that the wire is hot. The wire is hot enough to melt it. I think that's all right. We have here three precision resistors and one on the side, four in total. Those are remaining. They are, they're okay. There's nothing wrong with them. They seem to be spot on. You can see I've replaced these two. There's that one at the back there that I've just replaced. You can see it back there. Now, we've got this one here to replace. Um, this electrolytic here. And I don't know about these carbon resistors. I, I think the best thing is to go ahead and measure them and uh, see if they're okay. And that's pretty much the end of it, I think. Everything else, I believe, is in, within tolerance and probably good. So, next one, next project, uh, or the next step, is to take this blue one out. Uh, this is another 525 volt DC, so I was able to get a replacement for that. Um, these higher voltage uh, pieces are more difficult to find these days. So uh, just radios had it. So it would appear that they're more than just radios. They obviously do stuff. All these components can be used in amplifiers and all kinds of test equipment. Well here we are again. Uh, this is quite a few hours later. I've managed to replace these various capacitors on the top there. Uh, when I took the tube out to test it, there was some masking tape wrapped around there which uh, the tube base part sort of clips on the tube and it's the tube that's held in place by the bracket. So normally the base is uh, uh, fixed to a chassis like this is. And then the tube sits inside it. In this case, the base is actually attached to the tube and the tube is clamped. So um, I put the masking tape back on there or found some new masking tape, put it back so that the tube base won't come off. I don't think it would anyway, but it's just for the originality's sake. Um, you can see the two resistors here that I've replaced. I've cleaned all the pots um, and all the switches. You can see through there, uh, that's one of those um, precision resistors. I'm going to flip it over. And on the bottom, all the paper and wax capacitors have been replaced. There's uh, one, two, three, there's one down there at the back, and then through there at the back, I don't know if you can see it, but right at the back there, the yellow one is the precision uh, capacitor that was fitted. Then you've got your, um, I believe this was the 8 uh, UF 650 volts, or 600 volts, and here's the other capacitor above it, it's been replaced. And uh, yeah, at the back here, the uh, two resistors are out of tolerance, so I've replaced those. That one up there on the tube was quite out, fixed that one. Um, there's a couple here that I would like to replace, but I don't have them in my stock. So there's one there, and there's one under there. Uh, I believe, I think that's it actually. I've got a feeling though, there was another one somewhere, another one lurking. But I will come back to those. Um, they're not too bad, but um, they've drifted a little bit. I'd like to put uh, new ones in. So that's basically it. It was quite a job. I think it probably took me three to four hours. I think somebody with more experience could have done it much faster. But uh, nevertheless, it was a fun project. I just hope it works. So I'm going to blow out all the dust and uh, little bits from the um, solder sucker. It tends to drop things. And when you trim the uh, lead off the components they tend to fall inside so make sure there's none of that, that debris in there put the rectifier tube back and button it up and uh, see if it works so hopefully it will be fine and the magic eye will do what it's supposed to do because it was rather blurry before um, which is what although the tube was although the tube checked out well on the tube tester in this device it looked rather blurry and um, it was sort of fluttering in ways that I don't believe it should. 
Yeah. So anyway, let's put it back together and see what happens. So I'm going to test this now. Um, I've got the paper mica cap here that came out of this. I've plugged it in into my voltage converter because it's a step down to 110 from 240. So you turn it on here. Now I have to be very careful because this cap is just too big to attach to the uh, terminals directly so I've got this sort of lead connecting them. I don't want to touch any of this. I'll uh, get a nasty shock. So first thing is to turn it on, keep an eye on that magic tube, see if it warms up okay. Whoops, there it is. That looks quite bright and it looks quite well defined. It's not moving around any. So over here you've got the voltage. So as you turn this up, this is rated at 150 volts, so I don't want to exceed that. But we see its condition. Uh, let's start off with say right. <laughs> okay, um, that is just absolutely rubbish. I didn't even get to 10 volts, and it closed up completely. Uh, yeah, I've never wouldn't have expected that. So here we go again. That's not even on the scale, I guess that's about 5 volts. Okay, that's 6 volts or so, 7, maybe 8. Right. That's uh, 9 volts. Okay, that's, that's 10 volts, that's opening slightly. Yeah, that's not, that's, uh, that's that. So we're we're not even at fifty. Oh wait, we must be. Uh, what is that? Maybe twenty volts, and it's shut. The magic eye is not opening. So that shot, that uh, paper mica cap is absolutely shot. Wow, I'm uh, I'm surprised. I can't believe I turned it on actually before with that in there, and it, it seemed to work. You know, for a while it seemed to work. But the good news is, it's working now. Um, that magic eye is super clear. It's not fuzzy the way it was before. It seems like it's uh, it's going to be fine. So I'm going to turn it off a second, minding very much that I don't touch those wires. Um, I'm going to switch it off at the transformer and put another one in. When I came to edit this video, I discovered that a lot of the video at the end uh, was unusable because the camera was having trouble. It seemed to seemed to be going black and overexposing and underexposing and it was rubbish. So I wanted to finish the video with a test of the Sprague Black Beauty. So I put it in here. I've got the positive end attached to the positive terminal, negative to the negative. I'm going to turn it on now. I have to wait for the eye to warm up. And we talked about whether or not this was a, a usable capacitor or not, because it showed within spec on the meter, but we were going to test it under voltage. So this is a 600 volt DC capacitor, so I'm going to start turning up the voltage. And you see there, Magic Eye just rearing to open back up. Just bouncing way back, very fast. We're at 200 volts. It's wide open. We're at 300. It's still opening. It doesn't even close, to be honest. That's 350. 400. That's 450. It's still open. And that's the machine at full, and you can see that the magic eye, although it does look very slightly blurred, it seems to be, um, it has opened up again. I think it's safe to say that that probably could have been used again. It does hold up to the voltage, but of course the question is for how long, so I have replaced it, but that was interesting. When it comes to vintage components, that's what this is all about really. Um, I bought it primarily to test capacitors in guitar amplifiers, things like this. 
to see if the old ones are still working or if indeed the new ones are okay if they're passing any uh, voltage and this one surprisingly enough so is, is in good shape there it is a good tool back in service quite pleased to have it on my my bench thanks for watching this video by the way I hope this was interesting and that some of you who are planning on buying these or who perhaps have one and were thinking about restoring it I hope I've given you some sort of insights into how that might be possible thanks for watching my channel bye bye